Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So this is the beginning of the new year. I hope that you all are fully charged to start this new year with something productive as part of your resolution. I know that majority of us tend to have resolutions which do not last for long. That's the sad part of it, but we have resolutions. So do you want to know what is my resolution for this year? my resolution is to serve you in the best of my capacity by uh, making the current affairs as easy as possible for you all to memorize so let's begin on that note with the first question but before moving to the first question let me inform you that this pdf is downloadable the link of the telegram channel is in description from there you can download it so moving towards the first question which country has committed us dollar 100 billion for investment and infrastructure creation in india which will help achieve india's export target of us dollar 400 billion in this financial year here the right answer is option d uae so guys this is uh, basically the information given by the union trade minister piyush goyal uh, trade and commerce minister that uh, uae has committed this much of amount for creation of infrastructure in india and this is a part of foreign investment also in india okay and india's target is to achieve us dollar 400 billion exports in 2021 to 2022 which is historic in itself the target is such uh, uh, such huge that it becomes historic in itself okay uae will become a ga- gateway for indian trade to middle east and africa so basically by using uae india is also going to expand its network of exports in the middle east as well as in africa Moving on to the next question, what is the MSP for fair average quality of milling copra for 2022 season? The right answer is option is E, rupees ten thousand five ninety per quintal. Now, recently, Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has decided to increase the MSP on copra. Okay, so we have two types of copra: milling copra and ball copra. Or and on both of these uh, copras, the MSP is provided by the government. So. the msp has been increased to rupees 10590 per quintal for the milling copra okay for the ball copra the msp has been increased to rupees 11000 per quintal <clears throat> now guys if you compare the increment or the actual amount of uh, the uh, milling copra msp and the ball copra msp in comparison to the last year's price then you will get a difference of rupees 2 55 per quintal on the milling copra and a difference of 400 per quintal on the ball copra which you can see directly here okay so do not get confused by so many amounts these amounts are just telling you the difference between the last year and the current years uh, msp now which amount do you need to remember the amount this one okay most probably in rbi and sebi examination particularly rbi sebi phase 1 current affairs the max question that can be framed out of this uh, msp on copra could be this only okay the amounts that are there for the current season 2022 season now moving ahead the decision is based on the recommendations of the commissions for Uh, commission for agriculture cost and prices now you should be knowing this fact that there are 23 crops on which msp is, pri- uh, is guaranteed by the government 22 pe msp milta hai and there is one crop sugar cane on which fair and remunerative price is decided okay so do remember this fact and this the msp and this fair and remunerative price for sugar cane all of these are decided by this commission and this commission basically recommends to the cabinet committee on economic affairs next is that it assures this increment in the msp assures 50% as margin of profit as one of the important and progressive steps towards increasing the farmers income by 2020 two okay so a very informative kind of a point it is now national agriculture cooperative marketing federation of india limited and national cooperative consumer federation of india uh, limited will continue to act as the central nodal agencies to undertake price support operations at the msp in the coconut growing states now guys i hope that you all know what copra is copra is 
the nariyal uh, i hope that all of you must have seen the gola i should have put the picture here but i forgot to put it so some other day whenever we will be discussing about the msp on any crop i will surely bring to you an image of copra otherwise you can also search it on google copra is the gola theek hai uh, that is or oh, men that is many times given during the festivals also okay so uh, that on that coconut it's a form of coconut okay we have different varieties of coconut on one coconut we have bark kind of a kind of an outer layering and there is another coconut where no layering is there it's just the plain outing okay so that's the copra next question is which of the following act has been replaced by the major ports authority act 2021 guys the right answer is major ports act 1963 option a is the right answer now why is it in the news first of all let me tell you that this act major ports act 2021 was passed in the budget session okay so it was passed in march only and on november 3rd it has been implemented now why are we discussing in 2022 the reason is that recently very recently in the month of december only the ministry of shipping the central government has notified the tariff rules for the ppp concessionaires at major ports and from there this news has come up so i'm going to tell you both the news something about this bill as well as about the news so let's first discuss the news itself so the news is that this act has become operational since november 3 2021 in order to fulfill the objectives of this act which are which we are going to discuss a bit later after discussing this the central the ministry of ports and shipping and waterways has announced the tariff guidelines 2021 for the ppp projects in major ports so basically let me tell you what this ppp concessionaire is ppp is public private partnership so concessionaires are the holders of the land okay so whenever there is a port for example this is the entire port shama prasad mukherjee port you can say okay so here suppose this much of land has been given to adani it is just an example okay under the ppp partnership public private partnership so basically the under the operation of this entire port this is one of the major ports okay so it is probably it is also possible that the entire port has been given on a grant or on a concession to this company but we are taking this as an example therefore i have just taken up this much area only okay so suppose this is the ppp uh, partnership so the operation in this much of area will be carried out by the adani so this much area has been on concession with adani and this concession has been given by the ports authority okay so now adani will be known as the concessionaire because it has taken this land on concession now under the new rules what the government is saying that these concessionaires are free to decide the tariff for uh, transporting the ship the transporting the cargo via ships okay so whatever tariff whatever charges are there the charges are uh, will be decided by the concessionaire itself that is now adani will be in charge of deciding the tariff rates that's the entire news all about this is the only thing that you need to understand from this tariff guidelines 2021 okay apart from this there is one more fact here that in order to promote trans shipments the royalty that needs to be paid to the port authority and then to the central government because the ports major ports are under the aegis of the central government would be one times than the normal containers rate now what is trans shipment it is the shipment of goods or containers to an intermediate destination then than to the final destination for example if from uae a shipment is going to uh going to you can say thailand okay then we will have india in between then there would be thailand okay 
so suppose if a container is coming is going to thailand then it needs to uh, basically get fuel it or suppose kar lo ki trans shipment bhi karni hai the cargo or the ship is not capable to cover such a long distance therefore the ship has to stop at india's port india's uh, coast and then there they will trans ship they will shift the cargo to another ship and then that ship will cover the business to thailand that's the trans shipment now in order to promote this entire ecosystem in india the royalty that needs to be paid to the center has been reduced to one times of the charges of the normal cargo so that's the entire point is saying then for cargo uh, sorry for co coastal shipment the concessionaire is now allowed to pay 40% of the royalty in comparison to the earlier 60% okay so that was all the current news i hope that you have understood what the current news is now let's discuss some points related to this ports act also so first of all it seeks to amend this major act now it has uh, basically precised the uh, sections 276 sections earlier there were 134 sections so in order to reduce the ambiguity within the act the number of sections have been reduced the basic major purpose of this act is to decentralize the operations of major ports therefore the or uh, the ports have been given the operational autonomy they can now take a number of decisions in relation to uh, the loans that they need to raise in relation to the land that they need to acquire etc etc without going to the central government to ask for their permission so this will reduce the red tapeism as well as delay in the functioning of the ports and through this the central government is aiming to make the major ports of india as the world class ports okay and we all know that 90% of the export import business is done through the ports so if the port ecosystem is developed in india definitely india's economy is going to get a boost so that's the whole idea behind this major ports authority act now on which uh, ports it will be applicable this is an act guys not a port okay uh, not a bill so this act will apply to the major ports of chennai cochin jawaharlal nehru port uh, kandla kolkata mumbai new mangalore mormugaon Par paradeep vo chidambaram and visakhapatnam so these are the ports on which this will be applicable center will create an adjudicatory board in order to resolve the dispute between private players and the port board or the port trust okay because we know that these major ports are under the aegis of the central government so that's the public party and the private uh, party is the ppp concessionaires like we have seen in the previous example of adani and the shyam prasad mukherjee port trust okay so suppose if there is any dispute arising between these two parties then the adjudicatory board will take the decision okay it will listen to the dispute and take decision and this board will be set up by the center understood next is that fine for encroachment has also been increased to 1 lakh from 10000 to 1 lakh is the range of penalty if any land or which is under the premise of the port trust or which has the ownership of the port okay if that land is acquired by anyone is encroached by anyone without the permission then this would be the range of the penalty that will be levied on that individual moving ahead we have the autonomy part of this uh, act so what kind of autonomy is being given to the major ports first of all uh, the major ports will now have a board instead of a trust now you must have heard about jawaharlal nehru port trust shyama prasad mukherjee port trust so these major ports ports used to have trust but now they will have board under this new act the strength of the board has also been reduced to 11 to 13 from earlier 17 to 19 members now the new board will have this much of strength who will be the members chairperson hoga a deputy chairperson and both of these will be selected by the center okay then one member from the state from the center from the ministry of railway defense and custom department each and two members from the employee board employee board that is the uh, board of the employees working under the port uh, port board working for 
each and every major port okay then we have two to four independent members two is the minimum limit four is the maximum limit of independent members that can be a part of the board of any major trust major trust can enter a number of contracts okay of all the contracts the one um, the one of the most important autonomy that is being given to these ports is to raise loans now they can raise loans above 50 percent of basically up to 50 percent of its capital reserve but if the port needs loan that is above the capacity or above this limit then it has to seek the permission of the central government okay now what is a major port in india any port that is designated as as the major port by the center via a gazette notification the major ports come under the union list and non-major ports come under the concurrent list okay so that was all i hope that now you have understood the importance of this act now this act aims to decentralize the management of the ports okay so this is basically a good initiative on the part of the government Moving ahead, we have next question, which of the following is the prime objective of NSC prime framework? So here, right, guys, the right answer is option E. The right purpose of this NSC prime framework is to allow the listed companies to sign up for higher governance standards. Okay, National Stock Exchange has, uh, has uh, put out this NSC frame, prime framework for allowing the listed companies to sign up for higher governance standards than what is required by the law. Now, one of the most important questions that can be framed, up, framed out of this uh, news is that from which country was NSC inspired to release the NEC prime framework? Okay, so here the right answer is Brazil. From Brazil's Novo Mercado, so this is the voluntary compliance platform in Brazil also. So from here, the NSC was inspired to have such a framework within India itself. So this is a very important part of this entire news. Which company has launched India's first health locker integrated with Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission? The right answer here is option D, Doc Prime Technologies. Now, basically, they are going to give you the facility of a digital lo locker okay where you can just keep your files keep your health id and etc etc whichever uh, facilities being given to you under the ayushman bharat digital mission you can just keep them safe within the locker now understand that the prerogative to issue the health id is still with the central government this private organization is just giving you the facility of a locker okay for example we have different kinds of softwares that allow us to keep our files stored for example google cloud we have microsoft onedrive also so these are just the cloud platform similar would be this platform that will allow you to have your files saved at one place okay but the right to issue the health id the right to look into the health id all of that would be the uh, would be with the central government or the state uh, basically the center is in charge but this news is all about that next is what is the rank of kidambi shri kant in the bwf ranking 2021 so the right answer is 10th first is victor excelson who is from denmark uh, Kidambi Shrikant at 10th ranking. Top in women's is Tai Zhu Ying, who belongs to Taiwan. And India, India's is PV Sindhu at 7th rank. So these are just pure rankings. Now, guys, today, the topic of today's GK Factory is going to be the Constitution of India. Now, I'm not going into the Constitution of India by uh, just to tell you what there is is in the constitution i'm not going to teach you the constitution in this section no i'm going to reveal some of the facts that you might know not know before this okay like do you know who is the person who has written the entire constitution i'm not talking about the constituent assembly because the constituent assembly is the one that has created the uh, entire constitution yes they have framed the laws but the person who has written down those laws in a very beautiful handwriting. So who is that person? Do you know 
also do you know who has made the drawings in the original constitution because india's constitution is one of the longest basically the longest constitution handwritten constitution in the world so who is that person who has done so much of effort to draw the uh, uh, to draw the art on each and every page of the constitution of it so let's have a look at such interesting facts related to the constitution but not limiting ourselves to these two only so first let's have a look at the facts many of us think that the last day of the last session of the constituent assembly ho gaya pe it's not constitution it's the constituent assembly last session of the constituent assembly should be held on the 26th november 1949 because that's the day when the constitution was adopted so that should be the end of the entire process of making the constitution but this is not so the date is 24th jan 1950 when the last session of constituent assembly was held Constitution Day, which is also known as the National Law Day, is ob observed on November twenty-six at the time when Constitution was adopted in nineteen forty-nine. First Republic Day is celebrated on January twenty-six, nineteen fifty, because from this day the Constitution was implemented. So this is very basic. I know that you all know this, but how many total members were there in the Constituent Assembly? Did you know about it? Three eighty nine members were there. Now this is the person, guys, who has done this humongous task of writing down the entire constitution. This he is the calligrapher of Indian constitution, Prem Bihari Narain Rai Jada. Okay, do remember his name. Then artist Nandlal Bose, he drew the uh, art on this on the constitution like this, like this. Okay, so this is the art that was done on the Constitution pages by Nandlal Bose. Okay, and his students, of course, one person would not be able to do that alone. So he and his students, but since he was mentoring them, so he is the one who has been given the major share of the credit. Next is, but do you know there is a paradox in the Constitution? Constitution. fans for providing the universal adult franchise that is the voting power voting right for each and every individual but at the time of the making of the constitution the members of the constituent assembly did not get the right to vote themselves that's the paradox yes so there was no voting at the time of the constitution making that's why there are so many contradiction within the constitution itself and we have been doing amendments to the constitution in order to rectify that kind of ambiguity next is that india's is the longest handwritten constitution the shortest constitution in the general sense i'm not talking about the handwritten constitution in the world but in general sense at present the shortest constitution of the world is the constitution of monaco but where is monaco located can you guys tell me the country surrounding monaco's border in the comment section below do mention it next is that i had i have told you that in order to do away with the ambiguities of the constitution we have been amending it since a long time uh, a long period of time so till now we have done 105 amendments to the constitution first amendment was in 1951 now when this amendment was done a lot of changes a lot of things were added lot of articles lot of changes were made to the articles but the most important part the most salient feature of this amendment is that the ninth schedule of the constitution was inserted in this first amendment act only okay so do remember this latest amendment is the 105th amendment that was adopted in the 105th constitutional amendment act that was passed in october august 2021 to restore the states power to make their own obc list so this also we had discussed in the daily current affairs video only now guys this is the last portion of the gk section uh, gk factory section where i am going to discuss the foreign influence on indian constitution so i know i hope that you all know that the entire constitution was not the brain child of the constitu constituent assembly they have taken they have 
they have uh, taken some parts from other countries also so the majority part has been taken from this the government of india act 1935 we have federal scheme office of governor judiciary public service this is service commissions uh, emergency provisions and administrative details so this act was already there from this act we have borrowed this much from uk from british constitution we have taken parliamentary system rule of law legislative procedure single citizenship cabinet system prerogative rights parliamentary privileges and bicameralism bicameralism the presence of two houses okay so all of this uh, all of these things have been taken from the british constitution now guys as far as these two portions are concerned you need to revise them again and again because there is nothing we can relate to properly obviously these were the rulers of india they had ruled india so we can relate india system with them also because there are many similarity between british constitution and indian constitution like these okay which is mentioned in the table next is usa so here first one is fundamental rights usa was the first country that got its independence from the british however they were themselves britishers but that's in another story so they were the first who got the independence very early in the 18th century itself so they talked about the fundamental right and you also know this fact that usa is one country that acts as the protect protector of democracy across the world so within their own territory they are acting as the protector of the fundamental rights you can memorize it anyway okay so for some students the way of memorizing things is to revise them continuously for some student the way of memorizing things is to make the story out of them like for me also i memorize many things by creating a story out of those things if there can be a, there is a scope of a story like i found it in the us for some people pictures help a lot so choose your own way to memorize this because this guys is the very basic information about the law of the land that you should be aware of being an aspirant of rbi sebi nawar don't think that this is a upsc uh, topic and we would not be asked any question regarding this okay you are aware citizens and anyone can ask you um, even if they don't directly ask you about it but still you should be aware about the foreign influences on the indian constitution just to uh, just to be an aware citizen of india next is independence of judiciary okay and judicial review is also there impeachment of president so this to you can memorize from trump's impeachment okay recent ka bahut iska Uh, recently it was very much in the news the trump's impeachment before the us elections removal of supreme court and high court judges so if you are aware about the us state of affairs like in wto also us interferes and because of us interference wto's appellate body is not able to appoint new judges okay so removal of judges if you can link this news to this a uh, thing that we have borrowed from us then it would be good uh, if you don't link then do not just go into the wto's news that is an altogether another issue okay next is the post of vice president again kamla harris first women first women, uh, first women of color first asian women first south asian first indian bahut sare first lage unke naam kya ke so from there you can memorize that the post of vice president in the indian constitution has also been taken from us only and at present the person who is host, uh, who is handling this post is also an indian or a person of indian origin next is ireland okay so from ireland we have taken three things directive principles of state policy nomination of members to rajya sabha and method of election of president so if you want to memorize it from this picture you can see here here we have three blocks first one dpsp second one rajya sabha third one president so if this helps you so i hope that you can memorize it from here moving ahead next is canada okay 
federation with a strong center vesting of residuary powers in the center appointment of state governors by the center advisory jurisdiction of the supreme court so these are the four uh, things that we have taken from canada next is australia concurrent list freedom of trade commerce and intercourse and joint sitting of the two houses of parliament from germany suspension of fundamental rights during emergency because ये तो बहुत ही ईजी है याद रखना यू कैन ऑल रिलेट टू दिस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सस्पेंड दी फंडामेंटल राइट्स ऑफ द सिटीजन्स एंड बिकम एन ऑटोक्रैट लाइक हिटलर सो दिस इज द बेस्ट वे टू डू दैट डू इम्पोज एन एमरजेंसी एंड देन सस्पेंड दी राइट्स ऑफ द पीपल दी फंडामेंटल राइट्स ऑफ द सिटीजन सो दिस वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम जर्म नेक्स्ट इज सोवियत यूनियन सो दिस वॉज दर्लियर फ्लैग ऑफ द सोवियत यूनियन एंड दिस इज द करंट फ्लैग ऑफ रशिया ओके from here we have taken fundamental duties ideal of uh, justice social economic and political in the preamble so if you are a bit aware about the Re russian revolution then you should be know knowing this fact that the seeds of the russian revolution was the social was socialism okay to have uh, the uh, to have justice or in terms of social justice economic justice and political justice also to have the fundamental du duties so these are the things that we have taken from this soviet union next comes france republic and the ideals of liberty equality fraternity in the preamble i think this is the easiest of all next is south africa from here the procedure for amendment of the constitution and election of the members of the rajya sabha japan we have taken the procedure established by law so guys even if you haven't been able to memorize the entire table you don't need to panic first of all this is something that would not be asked from you directly in your phase 1 of rbi seven award so even if you are not able to memorize it don't just mark up it okay mug it up you if you revise it two three times or maximum 10 to 11 times then you will be able to memorize the entire table and even if you are not then just knowing two to three parts like we have taken the principles of dpsp from ireland the parliamentary system from here the suspension of fundamental rights from here the socialism idea in the preamble from here so if the equality liberty from here the sovereignty of the center the uh, the strength of the center from canada the appointment of governors from canada the fundamental rights from us then it would do good for you now i have given you this entire map if you want you can just print it revise the table many times and then you can just write making this kind of a block on the sheet if you want to do this exercise i just gave you this so that it will help you okay and here i would like to end this session thank you so much guys for watching this video if you like it useful uh, if you like this video and find it useful then do not forget to subscribe the channel hit the bell notification thank you so much guys